You were tuned in to 86370TV, the goddamn truth. What's up with QB Moore? Now, if y'all don't know who he's talking about, is it Dante Moore? Yep. I know Miami's recruiting him hard. I believe he was yep. at Florida State today. But why is this? Why are they asking this question? Well, this is why they're asking this question. Moore was quoted today, and I'm going to see if I can find it. I have my thoughts on this. Matter of fact, I know I can find it because I retweeted it with a little gif of shaking my damn head. Yeah. Um, I saw it. I saw it when you retweeted. Yeah. So this was quoted. This is what he said. Speaking, he's speaking of Florida State. They're not texting me every day or texting me always through the week. But you know, they got Chris Parson. He's committed here. So there's no love loss with them. That is Dante Moore speaking on his thoughts on Florida State and why he feels Florida State isn't recruiting him as hard as he should, as they should. Um, I want Terrence to go before I um, talk about this. And uh, what do you think about that, Terrence? Should they um, be? Okay, I, know, I know you love Parsons. I, I do. So and that's, that's my guy. I think that th there's some fear. If this is what's happening, if that's truly what's going on, which I, I have no reason to doubt what the kid is saying. Um, if that's the case, there's a fear that we lose Parsons. And at this point, we're trying to build a class around Parsons because that was our guy. But it also makes me think like, wait, this kid might really genuinely have interest. Like, if he's worried about us not texting him, and, you know, obviously he was there for the junior day. Um, but if he's that worried and concerned, why aren't we at least, you know, keeping it out there? Matter of fact, what does it hurt to stay in contact with this kid? He's a five-star QB. Like, stay in contact with him. I, I, it's concerning that we're not, but I, I, I kind of get the logic of not wanting to ruffle Parsons' feathers. And like, you know, but I also think from what I've seen from Parsons overall, he's he's committed to to being competitive. Um overall. I think that. I could be wrong. Uh even his track record might not say it because he's jumped a few different schools. Like he's on he's at his third he was at his third school or whatever. But I think it I think we should be. But I can't, I might see the logic in it and not wanting to deviate from like, all right, we need to build our class around Chris Parsons. Can, can I jump in real quick? Go ahead. Just real quick. Um, as um, because I was like you said, Ayla, we're recruiting him too, right? I, I I understand what you're saying, T. I just think the na the nature of what college football recruiting is. That, that mentality has to be done with, right? And, and the only reason I say that, we, we sat here a, a year ago, what were we talking about? Now, and I'm not even gonna say the name, but a year ago, what were we talking about, right? Yeah. And if, if there was anything is, is, man, I thought as sure as the sun was gonna rise, we were gonna talk about 12 being a no, right? It and wasn't these kids got options, right? Right, right, but again, but, yeah. you 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 keep your options open and you pursue kids aggressively, right? And you let it be known that I want you at my university. I just think that the reason I think Moore isn't in contact, this is just me talking. He's an up north kid from Detroit area, right? Is that is it the first time he's been on campus, Adrian? I could be wrong. I think it's the second. Second time, okay. Second. Now, see, now that to me. That right there is the problem. Listen, this That's is, a problem. That's a problem for me. This is where I was going to. He's making the trips, man. Here's where I was going to address. Ooh, it. That's a problem for me. So if you don't. Re so three weeks ago. Chris Parson put FSU social media in an uproar because he removed all his Florida State stuff off his account. Why did he remove it off his account? Well, if it, it had been announced that this kid was visiting the campus then. That they were recruiting Dante Moore, five-star quarterback. I think he's the number six overall player in the country. Yep. 
and everybody got a oh my god, you know, it was this big thing about was he decommitting? Is uh is, is the fact that we're recruiting a, a big time quarterback running him off mm-hmm. that that calmed down. Parson later on came out and was like, no, he's still 100% committed, but we all know how that plays out. So my whole thing with the Dante Moore thing is it's it's a real interesting situation. A part of me says you just got to trust the coaches and what they feel. Um, at the same time, this kid seems to be interested if he's making the trips. If he's putting out a, a quote like that, he seems like he would like – to be committed hard or uh, recruited harder. Mm-hmm. He could also be playing the system and, and whatever. You never know. That's where the coaching staff has to kind of feel out what they got going on here. My there, I think they're worried of not getting either. Like with Luke Altmeyer situation two years ago, I think Norvell is worried about not getting either. I'm not saying that's the right way to go about it. Burden the hands uh, worth two in the bush. You can't. Uh, it, it's interesting. It, 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 it's crazy. Obviously, I'm, I'm not a recruiter, so I don't know how you approach a situation like that. I mean, I know how Jimbo would approach it. Jimbo wouldn't give a damn. He gonna tell you know. But that was uh-huh. when that's when Jimbo had Jameis, and he could he could fall back on Christian Ponder, EJ Manuel, and Jameis Will Jameis Winston. Jimbo didn't give a damn. You was he was gonna recruit. Remember that year he rec- what did he, we had like DeAndre Johnson, DeAndre Francois. We had like and three, the other kid. Uh, yeah, we had like three quarterbacks in the class. Jimbo didn't care, and because he had that cachet, he could recruit like that. Well, mm-hmm. Norvell's been working with Jordan Travis for the last three yeah. years. He doesn't have that cachet. He hasn't proven the, the quarterbacks that he has recruited. One is at Nebraska right now, and the other one nobody thinks can play a lick of D one football. So Norvell don't have the cachet. I mean, we got to wait to see what A.J. Duffy can be, right? Um, I I think this might might be the wrong answer because you you can't – you know, you don't pass up on elite kids. But I'm not mad if they are looking at Dante Moore and saying they don't see a realistic shot. And they're saying, I'm not going to pour a ton of resources into that kid when I have a quarterback who's a damn good blue chip quarterback committed already, mm-hmm. who's from the South. I'm going to invest in that. So I'm not mad at that. If, if, if Parson is their guy, then that should be their guy. More sounds like he's interested, but do you risk – alienating Parson, because you know how college football works nowadays. These kids, what Jimbo did was an anomaly, man. These, these You're not pulling three quarter. Hell, you're not pulling two quarterbacks in most classes. So, especially two blue chip quarterbacks. You might pull and if you a, do, you might pull spring, a, one of them transfer. And you might pull a blue chip in a low three star. Like, you might be able to pull that off, but you're not pulling two blue, blue chips nowadays. If Parson is the guy, I'm all for it. And if they don't feel like they have a realistic shot with with more, you know, then I got it. So the 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 quotes the quotes like that never look good, but they do have a quarterback committed. So, so you know, I didn't know about I didn't know about what you just uh, mentioned. I didn't know about that at all. Um, about that? the removal, maybe I just missed it when he removed everything. I, I didn't I didn't hear about that. Um, so I completely missed that. But that's interesting because it kind of contradicts what I felt. Like I was getting out of him, you know. That's what I'm saying. So, you, you, I, mean, I think two though, weeks I, ago that he did that. Y'all, y'all you never know what he did. You keep, you keep your options open because the kids are doing it, and you should pursue everybody. You know what I'm saying? Ideally, I focus on three kids and just pursue them relentlessly, right? Because you, to your point, you can't give all the resources to a right? Because obviously. You can't recruit like 10 quarterbacks or anything like that. Or I don't want to spend all my time just on more because I feel like I got Parsons in the bag. I still got to recruit Parsons, right? Um, but I just think the point is, is whatever position you're recruiting now, especially in this climate, you better make sure you got your hand in a couple of different pots, man. Like I, 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 I wouldn't stress any school. Any school has to do that unless – I'm with you there. I'm you, with you there. You, you say to yourself now, this, this is a real thing. I'm just going to shoot for the stars. And say, you know what, Parsons, 
I'm just going to go all in on more, right? Because the transfer portal is a real thing. It is a real, real thing. And if I miss on a guy, I might have a guy by next week, in theory. You see what I'm saying? You know, not that I, not that you necessarily you, want to. That's a good more. point that I didn't think of. That you know that I mean? is a great point that you kind of bring up. Then again, with the quarterbacks, that iffy position for me. When you're talking about the portal, because if you're in the yeah. portal, if you're in the portal as a quarterback, you're in there for a reason. Unless you're Spencer, like unless you're one of these big name guys, then it's like obviously you're entering the portal because you have like Williams and Rattler, like they knew they had options. Right. Um, right. But we saw Chubba Purdy sitting in the portal for damn near like six months or something like that before Nebraska came called. Like, so yeah. a lot of these quarterbacks are sitting in the portal for a reason. I don't know if you – quarterback yeah. such a right. tricky position. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> I don't know well, quarterback is a tricky position. Yes, you might mm-hmm. be able to find a body, but do you risk giving up that, that, that high school prospect that you can mold into your own? It, it, I'm just saying that's from a, from a standpoint, ideally, you want to recruit your kid and develop your kid in your system, right? So at, at the end of the day, um, like us, like us right now, right? We're sitting on uh, Van Dyke, Garcia, and Brown. Brown and Garcia have to sit, right? And hopefully in two years or one year, both of them are there. And in two years, both of them are there. But at least one of them, hopefully, will sit and get some time to develop and then insert their way in, right? So ideally you want that. I'm just saying that, listen, if, if I if I feel like I'm just going to go big fish hunting and damn it, if I don't get a big fish, then I'm, I'm going to take one of these portal guys. That might be a strategy. That just might if, be a way these guys t- think about. If, if Mike has recruited the quarterback position a little better, I'd be on board with you. Sure, Meaning sure. if you didn't lose, like, okay, you got, if Purdy was still on the roster, you got A.J. Duffy, who I actually think um, the future is bright for A.J., in my personal opinion. Mm-hmm. But, you know, and if you had, like, another quarterback, I don't, I'm don't. i not even going to count Tate. I mean, sorry, but I'm not going to count Tate Rodemaker at this point. But if you just had, like, another quarterback behind – if you had three underclassmen behind Travis, then I'd be, I'd be with you. You know what? Throw all that to the – take a chance on getting this five-star sure, sure. uh, program-changing quarterback. But – Mike don't got that luxury because he's missed out on some other quarterbacks in the past. Like you go into next year, forget like this year, you only got three quarterbacks on scholarship. Right. You go into next year, Travis still has eligibility, but we don't know how that plays out. I mean, going to next year, you still only have three quarterbacks on the roster if you miss out on both of these guys, which is that's why I think I think they're coming from the standpoint of they can't miss out on both. So why not? invest in who has already decided to commit to us. I think I think that's how they're viewing it. And it's not like Parsons is some scrub. Mm-hmm. You know, you know he's what I'm saying? Kid, man. Yeah. That, I don't know if you've watched him, Jerk, but that kid can ball. He's, he's got a cannon. I mean, yeah, that look, kid I'm, can I'm ball. Not, so it's not, right. it, it's not like Parsons is some scrub. Right. right. Stick with Parsons and more probably, you know, you probably weren't getting him anyway. It's fair. Don't forget to smash that like button. And if you want to continue to hear the realest Seminole Sports Talk in the community, subscribe to 863 Seminole TV. It's your boy Polk over here on 863 Seminole TV. And we got you. Stay classy, Seminoles. <laughs>